Welcome to the Way of the Dad podcast, where we fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness. If you like what you are hearing, please share the podcast and give it a review on the platform where you listen. Thank you. The Problem with Hollow Threats, and the Importance of Teaching. Hey there, everybody. Glad to have you back again. Uh, So before I get into this, uh, well, the subject of this episode, uh, I just want to do a little bit of uh, housekeeping, so to speak, updates. Uh, Obviously, the podcast is literally just getting off the ground right now, and I uh, wanted to make sure it was really clear um, where you're going to be able to find the podcast, if you, or I should say maybe where else you're going to be able to find the podcast since you've already found this, right? Uh, so as of right now, and this may change in the future, but as of right now, I'm probably going to be, uh, making sure this, co- this podcast in audio format and podcast form, uh, will show up in virtually all the major, uh, podcast platforms. Google Podcasts, Apple, or, well, on iTunes, um, you know, all the, you know, big ones, probably iHeart, I assume, I don't know, Spotify, Pandora, I guess, um, but I did want you to know that it's also going to be available on YouTube. Uh, there is a Way of the Dad channel on YouTube, and this podcast will be available there, uh, probably in audio-only format, though. Uh, but if you like to use YouTube, um, you're going to have that option as well. I'm going to do my best uh, to get it onto to uh, rumbleandlocals.com as well, mostly just because those are two other, uh, well, seemingly bigger uh, video outlets. I do eventually probably plan to do some video stuff, maybe some like live streams, and I may also do some shorter rantier, I know I just made that word up, uh, but rantier type of uh, episodes or something very quick and off the cuff where I just want to get on there, say what I need to say about something, maybe it's really bothering me, or maybe I'm really excited about it, or whatever it is, um, but I just want to be able to do that. Uh, I am a big Bengals fan, so during football season, <laughs> after games, I got, I got thoughts on the brain, um, and hopefully I'll be doing that fairly soon. Um, but I uh, just want to be sure that you know where you can find it at. Uh, the Facebook page uh, is live, and I don't know if I'm going to use YouTube or Facebook primarily as my outreach or like the best way to reach me. I'm I'm going to say right now, as far as if you want to leave comments in whatever podcast platform uh, that you listen to, that's great. Um, I will try to see those, but there's too many of them and they're hard to, it's hard to keep track of all of them. I would tell you to go, if you want to send messages, uh, just quick little messages, obviously you can always email me at wayofthedadpodcast at gmail.com, but you should also be able to send me, uh, messages through either the YouTube channel or Facebook. Either one of those would be fine as well. I will maybe try to do some things where I try to gather some uh, thoughts and feelings from the listeners, and I may do that through email primarily. We'll see. So that's what I've got going on right now. Um, As things grow, uh, I do expect there to eventually be sponsors and advertisements at some point. Probably try to keep those in the beginning of the show. Um, for those of the, those of you who haven't already figured it out, when I worked on the opening, uh, the intro, obviously if you listen to the outro, that is the full song that I got. And if you listen to the, uh, intro, I did cut it down to just a hair over one minute. So, you know, 
a lot of people don't like to listen to a full intro, but if you want to listen to it, great. Um, I, I, I don't know, it was one of those pieces of music I finally found that actually hit for me. But uh, obviously you can hit the uh, skip ahead 30 seconds button a couple times, and you'll get right past it. But beyond that, yeah, eventually there will be advertisements or sponsors or whatever you want to call that. i got to try to find a way to pay the bills on this. And a lot of that, whatever money I do get out of that, will go back into trying to make this podcast better um, and give me more freedom to do more with it and evolve it. Because however it is right now, here in episode 5, I don't expect it to be that way at episode 105. Probably not even that way at 25. But I'll be doing that, and then I'm also thinking about working on getting some merchandise together. Uh, for those of you that might want that, uh, you know, simple things, hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs, stuff like that, on all that. And then there will probably be a Patreon or Subscribe Star or something like that. I'll, I'll figure that out. Maybe I'll do that through Locals, or maybe I'll just do it straight up through a Patreon or Subscribe Star. But if anybody wants to contribute to the show or just donate, that's great. I appreciate it. I don't know that right now I'm in the uh, position where I can do a lot of members-only content. Uh, right now, just getting the content out that I am getting out is is taking up enough of my time, mostly because I, I work a full-time job, got a couple kids, got a wife, and we have lives, and <laughs> you know, we don't... Uh, we don't just sit around all the time, so uh, we're usually trying to do a lot of things. We have a lot of friends and things like that. So, But maybe down the road, if it becomes a bit more successful, more profitable, more monetized, maybe that's a better word, monetized. Maybe there's cash flow, cash flow coming in. Uh, then that might allow me to be able to devote more time towards like you know member-only stuff or AMAs or something like that. But for right now, Right now, none of that's really there. Uh, I will be working on it and trying to work that up, but I just wanted to do a little housekeeping, a uh, little podcast update, show update, if you will. So getting to the point of this episode, it was, I can't remember where I heard it recently, but there was a, uh, there was a mom, you know, out and about in the store and kid was doing something. She didn't like it. And and the kid was, he was getting into some stuff. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world or anything, but you could kind of see and sense frustration, you know, exasperation, you know, in the mother. And, and she says, you know, you need to stop that. That's bad. You need to stop getting into that stuff. That's bad. And the kid was like kind of making a mess. It was like a, it's kind of like a little display near the cash register where, you know, you have some trinkets, some knickknacks, and, you know, some mild candy, things like that, and the kid was kind of getting in there and moving things around and, you know, making a mess. You know, kids do that. And uh kid says, well, why? You know, she said, you need to stop doing that. That's bad. And he says, why? Because I said so. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I've definitely heard that more than a few times in my life, right? I bet you have, too. But it got me thinking. That statement never held any water. And my mom was pretty good about... I mean, she had her fair share of because I said so's, or because I told you so. But she didn't do that very often. Fear of God getting put in me happened more than a few times. And, uh, you know, imminent threat of severe bodily harm of course, that was never actually going to happen, but I didn't realize that until I was a bit older and I realized mom's been saying that for a long time. But anyway, so I never liked the because I said so. And I remember as a kid being around other kids and their parents. And I heard because I said so. Now, I don't know how many times those parents, uh, my friend's parents, said it, but I noticed it when it was said. And I remember, like as an adult now, I think back on it, and I remember kind of, even as a kid, thinking, well, that's kind of a cop-out. That's kind of a, I'm really tired, and I don't have any gas in the tank, and kind of like a, a Hail Mary. Like, that's, yes, that's where I want to go with that. Kind of, it was kind of like a Hail Mary by the parents. Like, it's fourth quarter, 
20 seconds on the clock. You're 50 yards out. You can't kick the field goal, but you got to try to win this game. And you're just going to just go ahead and take that seven-step drop, and you're just going to lob that football to the end zone and just pray your wide receiver comes down with it. That's what it's like. Because I said so. It's like a Hail Mary, and you're just praying to God your kid doesn't challenge you on it. Because it's the ultimate, I don't want to deal with this. I don't actually have an answer. And please, God, stop pushing. It is. Am I above using an I told you so before? Nope. No, I'm not. (laughs) I wish I was. But I'm not. I am very happy to say that I have used it exceedingly few times that I'm aware of. But I recognize it now as a parent. I recognize it for what it was. Now, back then, as a kid, I just always felt like it's kind of, kind of like a cop-out statement. Now I realize it, it was a Hail Mary. It was, a, it was kind of almost a weird version of an idle threat. And you're just hoping the threat works. I'm going to bust your backside right here in front of everybody, and you just hope the kid goes, oh, gosh, I don't want that to happen. Okay, I'm going to straighten up. Because <laughs> you really don't want to do it. You really, really don't want to. But it's been a long day. Your kid or kids have found every single last raw nerve you have. And they've been playing it like a harp. Just beautiful music on those nerves. But I did notice, at times, there were, there were certain parents that I noticed, because I said so, was almost like, it was almost like it was one of the tracks on their greatest hits CD. It wasn't their... Hail Mary. It wasn't their option of last resort. It was their go-to. And it was their go-to. And they actually followed it up with a punishment or a quick swat on the butt or whatever. Now, I'm not going to be one of those people tells you that you shouldn't follow up with something you threaten to do, such as, you know, punishment or grounding or if you're uh, if you if you're okay with uh, a good swat on the butt, which uh, hey, that's how I was raised. I'm not saying I've never done it. I don't know that I've ever felt like I had to do it a lot, but I've done it before, especially when my kids were much younger. But I'm good with following up. But because I said so, if that is your go-to, what do you expect a kid to learn? The only thing a kid can learn is mom or dad is mad. And if I keep doing this, I'm going to get my butt spanked, or I'm going to get grounded, or um, whatever. But did they learn why what they were doing was wrong? Did they learn why that action, that behavior, was wrong? Nope. They learned that it was. Maybe. Maybe. But they didn't learn why. And what is... What is a child, especially like a hmm, three, four, five, six, seven, eight-year-old, if you've ever met any of them, do you know what their favorite question on the planet is? All time, all throughout human history, in every language that this word exists, why? But why? But mommy, why? 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 But why? Well, you tell them why, and then they go, but why is that? And then you're oh gosh. And then you're 12 whys deep into a conversation you never wanted to have. And every explanation that you give that you think, there it is, done, boom, mic drop, and they go, but why about that? And you, like, just want to collapse on the floor. (laughs) Been there. Done that. Not a good time. Zero out of ten would not recommend. But why is important, the, 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 the question why? Now, I'm not saying that you have to be a deep philosopher. Every time your kid asks why, something's not good. And in the moment, let's say you're out at a store, or let's say you're at the grocery store. Oh, boy. At the checkout line. Oh, boy. Mmm, those M&Ms. Oh, look at these Snickers. Ooh. I think I'm thirsty. Can I have a pop? Oh, there's chips. Oh, there's candy. Oh, gummy bears. Oh, yeah, I know. 
it's like a it's like it's like a it's like an eyeball overload for well, heck my kids are 13 and 14 and they still always want M&Ms or something you know oh dad can I get some gum dad can I get some M&Ms that's when I tell them they're grounded for the rest of their lives or something like that I don't know they don't believe me anyway so let's say you're at a grocery store and you're you know your kid's doing something is rearranging the entire shelf and you're looking around and everybody's looking at you like you're the worst parent on the planet and god can't you get that kid under control and and the you know the the checkout person is looking at you like you might be the most ineffective parent ever in that moment i understand you need to put the lid on this real quick and dirty probably it's not time to be socrates okay it's not time to be confucius and become a deep philosopher on why this is not okay but there are a lot of times that at some point you're going to need to explain why I don't know that you need to spend a lot of time trying to explain why ruining someone's hard work to organize, you know, a display is a bad thing. But there are going to be situations and times where you are going to need to explain why something is bad or good. Why it is important to act a certain way in a certain setting. You are going to need to show them, teach them why. Another situation you might deal with is you see your kid do something and it absolutely blows your mind. Like, you just couldn't imagine your kid doing something less intelligent or less self-aware than what you just saw in that moment. And what's that conversation go like? Why did you do that? You ask incredulously. The kid goes, I don't know. Now, there's probably some accuracy in there. There's also some deception in there. But a lot of times that deception, at least I've found, is not that they didn't know it was wrong. They know it was wrong now. But they still don't know why they did it. They just did something. They just did it. Totally mindlessly. Totally not thinking about the consequences, or what would happen if I do this, then this happens. Kids don't, especially the younger we go, by the way, kids don't have a lot of if-then protocols built in. And what I mean by say if-then, so this is extremely old, very basic computer programming of which I have all of three classes in high school with. But I remember this for some odd reason. So you could uh, create some very basic animations or things using using computer code, and it was called as an if-then rule. And so the if was, if this is in this position, or if this code hits this particular spot, then this thing happens. You see this, this thing will be shown to happen. Okay? So if-then is a simple, what we would call a first first order consequence if i do this then this happens if i take too long of a shower the hot water runs out if i cook a steak too long it turns into a hockey puck if then so a lot of kids don't have a whole lot of the then part of things they just do things and how we as adults know why would you do that? You had to know this was going to happen. No, they didn't. Probably not anyway. They didn't think about that. They didn't think about what would happen if they did something. They just did something. They just do it. With no thought, or con no thought of the consequences because they literally haven't learned to think ahead about the consequences. Whereas most, at minimum, preteens and teens have started to think about this a little bit. But obviously, this continues to mature until we're adults, and then, you know, <laughs> it definitely continues on even after that. So, teaching is important. I mentioned how my stepdad in uh, uh, episode number two wasn't a very good teacher. He really 
didn't have the knack for it. He was a, like I said, a good man, hard man to live with, not an easy man to please. Always seemed like you, you could never live up to his uh, standards, whatever they were. Felt like they were virtually perfection. But he was not a very good teacher. He was very much of the era of uh, children should be seen and not heard. <laughs> um, I definitely didn't subscribe to that. So there was friction, as you might imagine. My mom was a little bit better of a teacher, though. Uh, she was pretty good about talking to me. But she just she didn't just talk to me and tell me things. She talked to me and she always she always gave me the room to voice my opinion. And she'd tell me straight up that just because I have an opinion doesn't mean that it's right or that we're going to go with whatever it is I think or want to do or don't want to do. But I was going to have the ability to go ahead and at least get it out. Say my piece, so to speak. And so there was some respect in that way. She gave me almost the respect that you think you would give an adult. Respect your opinion, I disagree. But I respect it. But my mom was a better teacher. She would talk to me and try to teach me things. Try to tell me why something was not a good idea. Try to do her best to teach me about the consequences of bad choices or how easy it is to ruin your life making a bad choice here or a bad choice there. Talking to me, reprimanding me plenty about how I acted in a situation or how I talked to someone in a situation. If I was being particularly snotty as a teenager or if I was being um, selfish, spoiled, you know, all those things. I mean, sure, the hammer would crack down real fast. She'd crack the whip real fast, and not an actual whip, just in case anybody's wondering. That's a term. It's just a phrase. I didn't actually get cracked with a bull whip. But she almost always remembered to teach why that situation was wrong, how I handled it was wrong, how I talked, how I acted, why it was wrong. She rarely resorted to the, because I said so. The phrase, because I said so, teaches kids nothing. Nothing at all. At best, it is a strong indicator of severe repercussions imminent and right around the corner. At worst, it's a hollow Hail Mary by an exhausted parent. It's a hollow threat. In neither situation does the child actually learn. How can you expect your kids to know how to handle a situation, how to act right, how to talk to, to others with respect, how to respect themselves, how to present themselves well and handle themselves well in tough situations? Most of their lives has been because I said so. Come on. It's not exactly a long page turner of a philosophy book, now is it? It's one page, and it has no depth. And to be quite honest, especially if the I told you so is a hollow Hail Mary of a threat, kids are just going to tune you out. They've heard that so many times. Well, because I said so. I mean, you can hear them saying that in their own brain right now. Heck, I did. Mm, because I said so. Mm, all right, whatever. Yeah, big deal. Or, after butt whooping or some kind of a punishment of some sort, mm, grounding or whatever, you can hear it. Mm, because I said so. Mm, make, what makes you so damn perfect? Who died and made you God? You can hear it. Especially in a teenager type voice, right? As a parent, unfortunately, it's a 24 7 job. There's very minimal vacation time. There's no. You know, it's very little downtime. There are days when it can be an extraordinarily thankless job. But it's so important to be a teacher. You've gathered so much wisdom in your life. Some of it through literal trial and error. Some of it you've gained from your parents. 
some of it you've gained in spite of your parents, and other parental type figures, role models, things like that, right? You've even gained some from watching your friends screw up and fall flat on their faces, and you got a front row seat, and you go, hmm, I'm going to write that down, make a little note of that, store that away for later. But you have to pass it on now. You have to show them and tell them why. Why do you say so? Why because you say so? In the heat of the moment, like I said, probably not the best time for that. Don't need to get down in the middle of Kroger while everybody else is losing their mind and you're holding up the line. Or Walmart or wherever it is you go shopping. And punishment is important because the punishment does help to teach in, in, a, in a very rudimentary way that actions have consequences. And consequences typically have a cost. Now, sometimes that consequence is a positive consequence, and that cost is a net positive. That's, a, that's an influx of cash, so to speak, or an influx of value, if you wish. A lot of times what we're talking about right now, we're talking about actions having negative consequences, and then those consequences having uh, negative cash flow of cost, for sure. They have a price. But punishment is not the most important thing. I tell my kids all the time, I'm less concerned with the fact that they messed up, made a mistake, screwed up, whatever. Yes, there's going to be a punishment. Yes, there's going to be. And, you know, this sometimes this is after I've calmed down. I am not above getting super hot from time to time, depending on, you know, how egregious the error in judgment was. But I always try to make sure my kids understand that my concern, okay, you did something wrong. You screwed up. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. Whatever. I love that skit, by the way. It happened. Okay. I'm not going to sit here as, 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 a, as, a, as an individual human being and as a parent. I'm not going to sit here and constantly just be baffled at the fact that this happened. I can't believe this happened. This was so embarrassing. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Get over it. Get over yourself. And get past it for yourself and for your kids. I tell my kids, you did something. Okay, whatever. That's done. It's in the book. That chapter's written. It's done. The only thing that matters is now what? What did you learn? What are you going to take? What are you as the child who made a mistake and made an error in judgment? What are you going to take from this forward into your life to help you get better? That is the most important thing. Punishment's necessary. There has to be a cost. We humans learn much better when we know we get a, a sharp, quick cost. And we're like, oh, don't do that again. But also, need to know why. Kids aren't born with a predetermined instruction booklet of do this, don't do this, this is bad, this is good. They learn that through observing their parents, through learning from their parents, through their parents directly teaching them, in addition to all of their other role models and other parental type figures in their lives, grandparents, etc. That's why, what did you learn? And why is the most important thing. Anyway, so that's going to about do it for this episode. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys listening to me prattle on, and I hope you're getting something from this. I don't know. I'm enjoying talking about these things and kind of scratching down some different concepts and thoughts I've had and then kind of letting them see where they go. I do have basic outlines of these episodes, but I don't script them because... One, I don't have the time to write down scripts all the time. Uh, but two, also, I kind of like to talk off the cuff a little bit more. Even if I do sometimes uh, kind of bounce around a little bit. I try not to. I try to use my, my outlines to kind of keep me at least somewhat on track. But anyway, that'll about do it. So until next time, take care and have a great day.
The Problem with Hollow Threats and the Importance of Teaching Thanks for listening. The Way of the Dad podcast is produced and recorded by, well, me, a stunningly average husband and father, who appreciates all of the likes, shares, reviews, and support you give. If you would like to reach out, you can find the podcast on its Facebook page, and of course you can email me at wayofthedadpodcast at gmail.com. Come back next time as we continue to fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness.